Hey guys, welcome to my first ever podcast episode. I'm gonna just be doing this thing where I'm cooking along with the guest. And our first ever guest is Jeremiah Tower, which is phenomenal. This guy, he is the godfather of American cuisine. Considered a father of the American cuisine. We should know who changed the world. We should know their names. He has pioneered the way for all of us. And uh, we're gonna be going over our salt-free seasonings from Spiceology for our contest with Chef's Roll. So go ahead and check this out. Check out our little dish submission. Hope you like it. How you doing today? How's, how's Cabo? Very good. But you can see in that hideous painting behind me, we're in a rented condo. <laughs> yeah, I see that. For three days. Was that a blue tree or something? Yeah. <laughs> it's a cooking, cooking lesson. Awesome, man. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, I think uh, the way we can do this is I have I have like all the meads here in front of me. Maybe if you want, you could just run me through it, and I'll just do it to your direction. Yeah, great. Yeah. All right. I mean, no, you just present it the way you want to. You know, no, I'll, I'll uh, make it up as we go along. Okay. So um, I've got the El Taco, salt free. I just yes. tried it. Yes. Um, I don't have the guac and roll, but I'll just pretend that I have it in here because oh, it wasn't in the box. Okay, so first uh, you start off with the, the spices, yeah? Yes. Okay, so spices and in a container, and then what do we got next? Lime juice. Lime? To, uh, moisten it, yeah. Lime juice? Yeah. Do you ever uh, roll your limes, you know, to get the most yes. juice out? Absolutely. Get all the juice out. Little trick. Like, what was this inspired by, mainly? Well, you know, I spent 10 years living in uh, Merida, in Yucatan, and the local market near me had the, I mean, the open-air market, farmer's market, had the best tacos. I went there four or five mornings a week, you know, for breakfast to have tacos. I mean, blood sausage tacos. Oh, uh, man, that sounds oh, great. God. And then I taught them a few of my own, so it was great. You just got to go there every morning. Perfect, torti perfect tortillas because they were made, you know, around the corner in the market. By some mama, right? right? Yeah. Different kinds of corn, ground right then, made into a paste, into the masa. Rolling out the tortillas and then cooking them over a charcoal fire. I mean, they were heaven. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought of making my own tortillas for this. I've got some nice purple heirloom corn, but instead... I've got some tortillas made, uh, tortilleria yeah. here, which are still I mean, that's still a great good. idea to make your own tortillas, but if you can find some place that does artisanal tortillas, yeah. go there. These are great, so. So I've got the- Where'd you get those? These I got uh, from a place called Sergio's Tortillas, uh -huh. uh, here in Spokane, Washington. They've got a, a good amount of areas out here, but I mean, Making it from scratch is, I, I love doing that because we used to do that at the restaurant all the time. And right. we had a uh, Maria, which was our tortilla lady, and she was just the best at it. Um, love that. So, I mean, I've got the lime juice in here and the spices. Uh, I think I add the sour cream next, yeah? Yes, sour cream. All right, and of course, you want to like let this sit for at least 15 minutes, right? Right. Okay. And then, I mean, this is the sauce you can make in advance. Yes. And you could probably just hold this in the fridge. And what am I going to do, about a cup into here? Yes. I like to use pint containers to measure. I'm pretty sure every other restaurant person does, too. Usually, your halfway mark is about a cup. That's the way to do it, because, you know, measuring cups and measuring spoons are just such a drag. Yeah, you know, right? So you're doing it exactly. It a lot of the stuff stays in the cup. Exactly. And it also makes you better at what you're doing because you learn how to eyeball things and just go by yes. taste and taste, taste, taste. When your grandmother was cooking, she didn't measure, you know? And, and no. the French have that wonderful empoigné, which is a handful. Exactly. A handful of something. I love that. So I guess now yeah. we have this nice sauce here, right? Yep, that's good. And basically for a crema, that's what we're going for? Like a crema yeah. consistency? Yeah. Okay, so I've got that. What's our next step? The tortillas, it put the, all the ingredients together. So we're going to put the, uh, cook the prawns next. Cook the prawns? Okay. Yeah. I love that. 
the way you cooked that octopus in your the documentary Last Magnificent. Yeah. What was that in? What was that? Squid ink or something? That was uh, mole negro. Well, it wasn't not really a mole, but it's made out of charred chilies. They incinerate on in a big paella pan. You put the chilies, fresh chilies, and you cook them until they're black, uh, charred all the way through. Then they set them in water overnight. Then they grind them up and use you know wild fresh oregano and garlic and oil, and make a paste. That one sounds of the, great. Uh, three pastes of Yucatan: the green one, the red one, and the black one. Shoot, we might have to do that recipe next. Okay, so uh, the way you want me to cook these prawns is basically simmer them. You just bring it on to the beginning of a simmer and then turn it off. Okay. And let them, and then you watch them come up to pink. Any and lemon in leave, there at all? Leave them there as long as you want. A little bit of lemon, absolutely. You want me to chop it or you want me to just squeeze it in? Squeeze it in. Squeeze it in? Got it, all right. Just one single layer of the shrimp in there. These are just farm raised, but if you can get the golf ones, I'm sure that's best. Grilling them, you know, they, t they turn dry and tough very quickly. This mm. method, you can be sure that the prawns on the shrimp are, you know, moist and, and the right texture. Of course, you have more control over it, and you just more bring control. it to a simmer and just kind of let it ride. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, lemon juice at the end, of course, yeah. Yep. Call you the godfather of American cuisine. How does that make you feel? Well, I don't know about that. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I hope I'm not the last magnificent either, you know. It's a great well, title to sell a movie, but it's embarrassing. You pioneered the way. Well, that's because, you know, I, I, my success in the beginning was I didn't know what I couldn't do. So we just did everything. Chaos. That's your advice right there, huh? That is. I like that. Chaotic cooking. All right, so that's good. Brought that to a simmer, that was quick with this insane, ginormous thing. Induction heat cooker, right? Yeah, it's one of those yeah. Breville poly science guys. Yeah, they're great. You've used one? Yes. You know, whenever they don't have a hood in a restaurant, you use that uh, induction cooking. It's great. Yeah, we had a spot called Sea town that I would work at a lot. And it, I mean, it, it really sucked, honestly, because you're in a tiny little kitchen, little yeah. shack, yeah. and uh, they had no gas. It was just, you know, little induction burners like that, which, of course, this one is way better than the one we had. So right. uh, doing an order of mussels took like 10 minutes, you know. I mean, I love them, but only induction heaters? I don't think so. No. No. You gotta that's have, rough. I like wood fire, honestly. That's my favorite. Right, right. I mean... Small kitchens at the Balboa Cafe in San Francisco when I took it over. That kitchen held three people shoulder to shoulder and this restaurant was 90 seats. So every time somebody complained about a small kitchen after that, I said, oh no, no, you don't even know what a small seat is when you're doing 200 lunches out of So I'm sure it was amazing when you had stars, right? Oh, well, that's different. That was huge. Yeah, that was ginormous, huge. I saw. It was a lot of fun. Praise. If you see the movie, there's a great scene in there on a Friday night at Stars, and that shows you what, you know, how crazy a restaurant can be. Yeah, the energy looked insane at Stars. Yeah. So that's, that's something that I really admire, is the, the energy that a chef can put out into the restaurant. You know, that, right. that's, that's all you right there. So. Well, you have to be a little crazy and obsessive to be a chef. I mean, look at you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Look at you, you're making the best cooking videos on ever. The best. I wouldn't say the best, but I'm Not trying. boring, absolutely informative, and fun. I love them. They're the best I've ever seen. Well, I appreciate that. Well, we've got a, a nice color on these. Not too uh, far down. There we go. Kind and of pink. Of course, you get to test one. You get to eat one to make yeah. sure. It's, you know, you right. say uh, cut them in half lengthwise, yeah? Yes, please. Probably a little more lemon juice. Good. Okay. Now we're going to blister the, uh, the chilies. I draw on the blister? chilies. Okay. All right, so blister these. Any acid for these? Or? No, 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 not yet. Okay. So these seem blistered enough for me. Good. Well, just chop them up. Seeds and all. 
great thing about the uh, tacos in Merida, the food markets, you know, if you give them a little bit of extra tip, they warm the tacos, uh, the tortillas, for you when they're making a taco. And that's so much different. So we're going to do that, right? Yes. We're going to warm the tacos. I mean, you can either put them on a grill or just flash them in a hot pan. So I did just, these the way my grandma always did it for me growing up, is you, yeah. take, you take the ones that are from the tortilleria, you right. put them in a paper towel, right. and you toss them in the microwave. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, it just so comes not, out great. Not in that metal container. No, no, no. I just keep it in here so they stay warm. <laughs> oh. Right, but uh, yeah. usually you can go to uh, like any tortilleria or even the gas right. stations and we have ice chests full of warm tortillas ready to go. Right. Um, I'm when sure I lived in Cozumel, there was one around the corner and I'd go there every day and I'd see, and I'd say, you know, I'd have a quarter of a kilo of tortillas and they didn't know what I was talking about. Little, the kids would come up, you know, to get the tortillas for the day or the morning and order two kilos and I was a stack like that. Damn. Yeah, I mean, that's how it is. Tortillas are your, your utensil, you know? Right, right. Okay. So we've got the peppers chopped up. Yeah. And now I guess we're just, we're building it, yeah? We're building it. Should I just drain the water? Drain the water. If I was classic French or even uh, stars in San Francisco, I'd make a broth out of the um, essence out of the shrimp shells, reduce it down, and pour a little bit of that over the uh, peppers. That sounds but, delicious. But I just didn't, you know, didn't want to make this so complicated. People wouldn't do it. And there's a tip. That's not too complicated though, and you're using your scraps, so yeah, saving money too, or making money if you're in a restaurant. Yes. All right, so these look oh. nicely covered. I'm in a restaurant. I like to sell things three times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like that's that's what we all say. You're just you're turning basically yeah. people's garbage into gold. Yeah. Yeah. A little peppers or a little shrimp. Fresh. Peppers. All right. Okay. And the prawns. And then a little bit of that sauce over it. And a little more sauce on top. And then maybe we could do a little more of this, uh, I guess, taco on top. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. And I would put, you know, in the recipe I said put nasturtium flowers, but I don't know if it's the wrong time of year for that. Yeah, especially in uh, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got some uh, cilantro. But Let's see. Got some uh, cilantro. Yeah, I got some of that. Very yeah, wonderful. There you go. Yeah. All right. There you go. I Call love it cilantro. Up. Can you pick it up? Yeah. Roll it. Pick it up. That's a bite down on it. Stuffed tortilla. Yeah. yeah. No salt. <laughs> okay, sneak some salt onto it. <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, I mean, I'll put some flaky salt, but honestly, the shrimp, they're, they're kind of salty enough. So if you're like on a yeah. salt-free diet, it works out. But uh, if you're like and us, you can, you can do it with salt. It's still good. Yeah. But the yeah. peppers in here is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And a little shot of tequila before. You know, and a beer. Well, uh, awesome. I hope you're enjoying Cabo, and uh, we got to do this again. Uh, I'll, yes, I'll, absolutely. Let's I'll, do one from Puerto Vallarta on the beach. I love that. There we go. Okay. Well, thank you Great. so much for joining. Thank you. The Godfather of American cuisine. Thank you. Thank uh, you. The new Godfather. <laughs> of, actually, not. I mean, the new master, maestro of food videos and cooking videos. You're the best. Oh, you are. Thank you so much, Chef. I'll we'll see you in the next one. We'll chat soon, too. Okay, great. Take care. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining this episode. Let me know who else you'd like to see, or if you want to submit yourself, go ahead and submit with a recipe. And uh, I'd love to see you on here, and I'd love to have you.